I'm Joan Newcomb, and today's Mystic Minute is Creating in Other People's Realities. I have a 14-year-old corgi. I think that is something like 98 in dog years. She's matronly, and she's lucky if she makes it to the end of the block and back. And I walk her twice a day because three times a day is too exhausting. And I just hope that she remembers her mission when she makes it to the end of the block. And her mission is to poop. If she sees people, if somebody comes pets her, she forgets her mission and we make it home and she hasn't pooped. This morning, however, it was just cold and rainy. You know, fall has hit the Northwest and she was having a little trouble with her joints. So she just didn't have a mission when she got there and she's walking back and I'm thinking, oh, I just really want you to poop, Emma. Emma, could you poop? And so I'm trying all these different things. Like I am gonna like step into the reality where my dog poops right at this place. I'm gonna step into the reality where my dog poops right at this place. She doesn't poop. And what I realize as we're both wandering back to the house in the rain is I can't create in somebody else's reality. Now I, also, I've stepped into reality where I have a dog that's not pooping. It's not going to be a big deal. She'll just make a big one later on <laughs> today. But it reminds me of other people's realities that I would definitely like to create in. I would like to have this family member not be experiencing this amount of depression and grief. You can create in other people's space, but it's not very effective. You can manipulate the hell out of people. It's not very effective. When you're working on an energetic level, if you try that and all you've done is enmesh yourself into the reality, it doesn't really work. In terms of navigating this life as consciousness, creating your reality in the world of consciousness, that's old paradigm desires. When I look at my dog pooping or not pooping from the perspective of consciousness, it's really not a big deal. She's gotten down to pooping once a day. She doesn't eat a lot of food. That's what moves through her. <laughs> Yay, I don't have to bag dog poop this morning. <laughs> Yay, that means my husband gets to do it in the evening. <laughs> Family member suffering from depression. There's definitely a module for clinical depression I could probably toss their way. And the bigger picture of it all is that we are all consciousness, including my dog, including my family member. And as consciousness, this is a great big playground of density and effort and nothing is really that big a deal. Even intense depression, even incredible grieving is not the end of the world for anyone because as consciousness, I am constantly creating this world. Consciousness is constantly creating this world. Family member is consciously creating this world. Dog is consciously creating this world. When I am focused on other people's reality, however, I'm not home focusing on mine. And then how am I setting up my reality for the day? How am I experiencing what I want to create in my life? Can I create happiness when somebody in my life is unhappy? Suddenly I have this memory of going to the grocery store with one of my children when they were toddlers. and. Damn that grocery store, they started selling Batman figures that you could have gotten for four bucks at Target, but they had them priced for eight bucks. And I was not going to buy the Batman figure. You have never seen a two year old's meltdown in the checkout counter being told no for this overpriced Batman figure. I boycotted that grocery store for the next six months after that. And did not have to affect my happiness or unhappiness. 
my reality in the moment or not. There's a way of experienced mothers will know this. There's just a way of being clear and present in the moment regardless of the unhappiness of even someone right with you, much less somebody 3,000 miles away. So we're all experiencing heightened sensitivity at this time, which would also include people experiencing heightened emotional extremes and how you can manage it for yourself, how you can experience it with more ease and grace is to bring your focus back on yourself. You're not abandoning your grieving loved ones. You're not abandoning your constipated dog. Got to reframe that because the dog may not be constipated. It may only want to poop once a day. <laughs> but bringing your attention back into yourself gives you an opportunity to experience your own magnificence as consciousness. Your own ability to create your reality. Your ability to set your own energy level as serenity, peace, happiness, whatever you would desire to experience. And it does not dismiss somebody else's feelings, reactions to things, experiences of their reality. If anything, it makes you stronger to hold a space for them and their healing. So if you like these videos, you can subscribe to them on YouTube. You can also sign up below to get them in your inbox. If you want to know more, my website is joan-nukem.com. I do a weekly radio show and podcast, Conscious Conversations. I also do these videos a couple times a week. I write a new article about consciousness on my blog and in my newsletter once a week. You can see me in person at meetups around the Puget Sound. And if you want to know more about navigating life as consciousness and using consciousness techniques to move through this new experience of reality, you can go to joan-nukem.com and look up my coaching programs. So go to joan-nukem.com and I'll see you in another couple days with another Mystic Minute.